Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final day of the Super United Rapid Embrace in Croatia. And in the end, is the world number one, Magnus Carlsen winning the event. And one of the highlights of the final day is Magnus Carlsen's win against Nepo Miyachi once again. Yesterday, Magnus also defeated Nepo Miyachi. This time, another win for Magnus. So Magnus showing who is boss. As far as we can remember, Magnus, again, is not defending his title, and it's between Nepo and Ding Biren for the World Championship. So before that one happens, Magnus here shows Nepo, I'm still the boss. Let's check it out. Magnus was white, he went for e4. c5, knight, c3. d6, d4, knowing Magnus. Especially, okay, Magnus likes to have fun playing this rapid and blitz because he has this um, luxury of playing um, exciting and um, some sidelines uh, especially he doesn't like to go into this main lines and the mainstream he wants to go his way the magnus way Queen takes d4, knight c6, queen d2, g6, d3. One of uh, the subversions in the Sicilian to stay away from the main line of the dragon or main line of the Nidorf. So f5. Here, Nepomniachi played a novelty for f5. Previously, Lagrave went for bishop. D6 against Caruana. It went on with F4 and only then F5. Nakamura also played Christian with the same line. Nakamura has line. After Bishop B2, Knight into F6, Castles, Castles. King B1, Bishop G7. So Nepomachi probably wanted to surprise Magnus with the early F5 move, but Magnus is up to the task. Okay, bishop b2, bishop g7, castle spin side, then a5 and knight d5, of course. Now the knight is a strong piece on d5, potentially. Double attack on c7 to the rook on a8. Bishop d2, rook takes d2, bishop takes b2, king takes b2. Nepo went for king f7. Magnus play takes an f5, bishop takes bishop c4. Right. Threatening a discovered attack on b6 or c7, bishop to the king, knight to the rook. Also provoking black to put the knight on e5, then white can have a tempo later on with f4. So bishop e2, tempo f4, and g4 coming up here. So knight f6 takes, takes f4. That's an extra move attacking the knight. Knight e7, bishop f3, another. Important move. When when you create threats, it allows the opponent to react to the threat. So that's also an extra move. With that attack on b7, black has to react with that threat and he has to defend with knight c5. So knight e2, bishop e4 takes and takes. So b4, another threat. Knight has to move back. Knight c3. Right. Okay, this is an important detail also. Game, you know. Some players would just basically develop a knight on f3, but putting the knight on f3 doesn't have so much scope. With that pawn on e5, that pawn on d6 protecting e5, not so much in g5, black can just simply play a6. Okay, you can go d4, but what's next? Compared to what Magnus played, Bishop into f3, put the knight on e2. There's c3, there's d5, backward pawn on e7. That's the target. Okay, so this is what we call a prophylactic move. Bishop e4 takes, takes, d4. Knight c5, knight c3. 
always have to visualize things. What's your goal after three or five moves? We, we don't just play, okay, I play night at three because it's just developing. It has to have a purpose. There's 92, 93, the main purpose, 95, and the E7 point. So King F7, Rook King for Rook E1, Rook G8, Knight in D5, Rook AC8, C4, H6, Rook E3, Rook Lift, taking away that square on D3 at the same time, the Rook can switch to the King side with Rook H3. A6, Rook H3, King D7, back to E3, and G4, all right. Knight goes back to D7, F5, nice move by Magnus. Keeping that pawn on E7 as a target, all right. So no e6. Potentially there's a e6 as well. So knight here on e5, e4. Takes and takes. All right. The point of a4 is all. The point of a4 also here for white is to prevent b5. As pre prevent that pawn break. Especially that the knight now is on e5 to that pawn. Or to that square on c4. Important anticipation, so takes so or J to H4. So Magnus used this rook, not the other one. This rook is taking away D3. So it's role playing, right? Rook, the rook on E3 keeps an eye on D3. Is the rook on D4 not doing anything? That rook attacks the pawn in H6, the isolated pawn in H6. So b5, man pocket and wait. It's a pawn, takes, and we're going into the end game. That's a critical pawn. Rook c5, knight c3 back. Magnus is ready for the complications. Rook g2, king e3, the king is safe. And the pawn is three steps away from promoting. One, two, three. Rook goes back to c8. Why doesn't mind? Take another pawn, two pawns up. Rook to eight, ninety four, nice move. Rook to c three. The rook wasn't doing anything on e three. Put it on c three. Rook c seven is coming. Rook a five, pass one must be pushed two steps away. Rook behind the pass one. All right, rook c seven. Keeping an eye on that important weakness on e seven, the backward pawn. Rook G B4. Here Magnus went for a passive rook H3. He could just easily win here with the so, so. Ignoring that threat on B3. If takes, takes. Uh, thanks to the knight on A4, protecting B2. Now E7 is weak. If the knight does the protection with G6, just takes, takes. And we have rook check. Rook will take the knight on E7. Game over. Although there's nothing wrong with rook h3. It's better to be safe and sorry also. And safe, protecting b3. King f6, rook c3, rook h4. If black captures f5, Magnus will simply take on e7. Okay. So Nepo went for rook h4, h3, an important pawn. Yes. Yeah, the principle of two weaknesses. This is an outside pass on another. Pawn that is going to promote on the B file. Rook F4, E3 back, restricting the knight. Right. X ray on E7. Where are the two rooks? Rook F1, and the point of Rook E3, by the way, it's also a square clearance. Magnus is so tricky. It's actually a square clearance for that knight. This square and that king. You put that knight on e5. In, in end games, especially in faster time control, the knight is a better piece because it's so tricky to have a knight in end games you know, like this. Because the knight can do force. And when opponent is the last time, it's not so easy to defend. Look at rook e3. The main reason is this one. All right. That's the hidden plan by Magnus. Right. Sneaky. 
tricky the rook can attack, of course. Knight d5. Bye bye. So rook a5, king b4, rook a6 attacking the fast pawn. And then if I check first, the king gives a fine unstoppable. Thanks to the knight. Yes, a knight in the middle controls eight squares. Knight is like an octopus in the middle here. Look at the knight, look at the scope of the knight. Ooh -hoo. And uh, in end games like this, the knight can simply dominate here. Yeah. After rook a1, final trick rook c6, because of course, if white takes that rook, then he has knight takes c6 to control b8. Magnus will not fall for that one in this promotion, then game over. All right, actually, Magnus won the tournament with a round to spare. He was that dominant. Okay, he, he had a for forgettable rapid event. But in the Blitz, uh, he was a so dominant, although not raking wise. Because the last two games, uh, he, he lost the last two games. Um, maybe he was just too tired, yeah. Yesterday, Magnus played nine games without a draw. And that is just very impressive. Yeah? That's the heart of a champion. That's what separates Magnus from the rest of the field. Uh, the other players, they use draw to at least take some rest. But, but Magnus is restless. Yeah? He wants to go for the win every single time. And that's probably the reason why he keeps winning tournaments. Especially this one. And next up for Magnus, the World Chess Olympiad. In just a few days. To be held in Chennai, India. So that was it. Magnus, the world number one winning. Super United Rapid and Blitz in Croatia. Congratulations to Carlson and thank you guys for watching and thank you for supporting our channel Charles Master Chess and Charles Master Entertainment on Facebook and YouTube. This is Coach Oliver. Stay safe everyone and bye.